Now, I'm aware this may be a controversial statement around these parts, but you know what? Blue gets a bad rap. Yes, yes, you're right. There are absolutely people who counter every single spell you try to cast and won't just let you play magic and they're really smug about it, but contrary to popular belief, Blue isn't just about making sure other players don't have fun. It's got its share of dumb fun goofy cards for dumb fun goofy people. Even in the long, long ago of the mid-90s, Blue wasn't all about stasis and capsize, despite what horror stories us old-timers might tell you on occasion. For every blue card that cut down on fun factor for both players, there were cards like Tradewind Rider and Leviathan for those with the need to live the spice. There were even kitchen table games back then when dream halls would resolve and the game would, get this, stay interactive. It happened. <laughs> Experiences like that would lead me to eventually become one of those people who identify as a blue player adjusts monocle, which would in turn lead me to bring blue to pretty much every competitive event I ever attended. But I promise you, I never played a control deck. I brought Esper Fairies to an SCG Open, and I attended a PTQ in Atlanta with what is still one of my favorite decks of all time. The glorious Pickles combo. It's so tasty. <laughs> now I say all this because Standard contains an absolutely ludicrous amount of fun blue cards, and none of them are named Oko Thief of Crowns. Just look at his smug face. That guy's a blue player. And I'll be the first to acknowledge that Standard has become a bit of a slog, mostly due to this jerk right here, and compounded with the grinding that laddering on arena demands, it can be easy to forget that a game is supposed to be fun, and you're supposed to play cards that you like. So today, let's take a break from attacking the meta and resolve to play a standard deck full of cards that are actually fun to play magic with, as alien as that concept may seem. Yo, I'm sorting through some heinous haters like a poopa scooper. I'm dead is trying to take my life like a Koopa Troopa. I'm double Mario. That mean I'm super super. And I'm freaking dangerous like a Troopa Troopa Cabre. Got them all day like a Kanye, but I'm way better. Getting cheddar in Monterey. But Jack, you don't know, man. You got the show, man. You want roast beef? Well, I'm Arby's. Okay, everybody, real quick before I get to the actual deck tech here, just one more video like this, I promise. And then the electrician is going to come on Monday. Hopefully, he or she will be able to fix the office. And you can see my beautiful round cherubic face once more but for today just one more video like this with the slides and such that can be fun too we're gonna look at mono blue fun time cards only captain because i don't want to wait until the 18th when oko is hopefully banned to experiment in standard or to play cards that i think are fun for that matter that you should need an excuse for that frankly but can the deck win you ask well i mean who honestly who cares right i'm just trying to have as much fun as i can but that said winning is fun so i'll show you a couple of games where we do just that a little bit later bear with me but i want to start the deck tech off today by looking at a couple of copies of gadwick the wizen gadwick is in fact rad and six. Just throw a couple of copies of Merlin in your deck. There's a reason I'm talking about this card first, because I was really excited to go ahead and start playing with it. I was really jacked about this card when it was first spoiled in Throne of Eldraine, and to be honest, uh, just like I don't want to wait until the 18th for Oko to get banned to start playing fun cards, I don't want to wait until a year from now, one year from now exactly, when Hydroid Crisis is rotated out of standard, and this is the new Hydroid Crisis, which it very well may be, but that said, I... would I'm just playing Mono Blue. I ain't got the room, for, I ain't got the time for Crisis, so I'm playing a couple of copies of Gadwick here. But this is so much more than Hydroid Crisis some of the time. And there's a lot of different modes you can cast it on, in a way. You can cast it for X equals 3, spend 6 on it, draw 3 cards, and that's a lot of advantage, even if it gets removed. But you can also cast this for like 4 mana, draw a single card, and then leave up mana to tap one of your opponent's creatures before they go into attack. That can be really important too some of the time. And if you untap with a Gadwick on the battle, field and a couple of cards in your hand, then the opposition mode on this effectively can just be brutal for your opponents. Well, there's a lot of fun cards in this deck to talk about, so I'm going to move on to another card I was jacked about when Throne of Eldraine first came out, and that's the Magic Mirror. This is far from the fairest, despite what you may have heard. This is actually quite broken. Just three turns with a Magic Mirror out is six extra cards drawn, and that fourth turn with a Magic Mirror out is ten extra cards drawn. Hopefully, you've drawn something. 
that'll help you win the game at that point. The card advantage that this provides over the course of just a few turns is really, really difficult for a lot of decks to match, and especially once the game starts going particularly long, this feels like way better than a search for his Kanta. Like, oh, you, oh, search, you get one good card every turn from the top four, but, you know, on your fourth turn with Magic Mirror, you just get to get all four of those cards <laughs> rather than look through them like you would with a search, for instance. So, Magic Mirror is insane, and some opponents have just straight up scooped to the value that this presents over, again, the course of very long games, and that can be very good against decks like Oko and Team of Reclamation and other decks that are trying to long game you. Well, we kind of do that better than any other deck so long as we get out a Magic Mirror, because by the time you hit turn 3, 4, 5 drawing cards with this thing, you're drawing nearly a full grip every single turn, and that's kind of really hard to beat. Now, moving on, I know that it might not be the most fun thing for your opponent to experience, but it is really, really fun as a blue player to steal your opponent's stuff. It just, it just is, and blue has a lot of really good cards that do that right now, so let's play a couple of copies each of Agent of Treachery and Mass Manipulation. Now, I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that these two cards are probably our best win conditions in the entire deck. They don't just steal permanence, they straight up steal games a lot of the time out of nowhere. They can swing a game that you're definitely gonna lose completely in your favor all at one time, especially mass manipulation, and a lot of games end when you land a big Gadwick on one turn that draws you three or four cards, or a magic mirror that you've had out for a couple of turns draws you three or four cards and gets you one of these two cards. Again, especially a mass manipulation. You can just you're gonna win the game. Mass Manipulation is just such a silly card, and it's another great way to go over the top of a lot of these decks that are trying to go long right now. Again, Soul Typhoon, or pretty much any food variant that carries Oko, we can often go over the top of. They want a long game, we'll give it to them, and then we'll just, we'll just take, all their, take all their stuff. That's fun. <laughs> Stealing an Oko is fun. Now, if we're going to play the Magic Mirror, we need to go out of our way to play a decent number of instants and sorceries, but that's obviously not too hard in blue. We get to play Opt, but we also get Callous Dismissal and even a couple of copies of Unsummon. I want a lot of these bounce effects in the deck, and as a matter of fact, these aren't even all of the bounce effects in the entire deck, but cards like this are really good right now. I don't have to explain why Opt is good. It's it's great. It's especially good once you land your Gadwick, because for one mana, you get to scry, draw a card, and tap a creature down and keep it from attacking you. When it comes to both Callous Dismissal and Unsummon, these can not only get you a little bit of tempo, which is all we're looking for in this deck. Big stuff like Gadwick, Magic Mirror, Mass Manipulation, Agent of Treachery, they all cost a whole bunch of mana. We need to get to that point in the game, so tempo is very important. Both of these bounce effects provide that, but Callous Dismissal and Unsummon, apart from getting rid of your opponent's problem permanence, can also pop back an Agent of Treachery to your hand so you can steal something else, pop a Gadwit back into your hand so that you can draw a bunch more cards. Lots of reasons why you'd want to do either of those things, so keep that tech in mind, but Callous Dismissal is especially ridiculous at this moment. This can pop an Oko back to their hand, get you a whole bunch of tempo, and a creature. Callous Dismissal is also pretty sweet against the Cavalcade decks. That's a good angle of attack to have right now, because if they actually waste their turn two plopping down a Cavalcade, well, you can just Callous Dismissal it back to their hand, get that tempo, and get a body on the battlefield that can actually kill most of the creatures the deck is swinging in with in the first place. But to finish up the instants and sorceries category in the deck, sort of, we've got three copies of Quench, three copies of Sinister Sabotage, and a copy of Chemister's Insight. Just the one copy, I don't think we need to go overboard on this effect. We've got plenty of things that draw cards, but I do want mid-game refills, and I especially want mid-game refills we can cast more than once, so yes to at least one copy of Chemisters, but we've also got a small suite of counterspells in here, just six main deck counterspells, because between stuff like Gadwick, Magic Mirror, even Mass Manipulation, and a couple of creatures and planeswalkers that we're playing, you really play a lot at sorcery speed, and this is kind of a mono blue mid-range deck, so you're not doing too much at instant speed all the time, so you don't necessarily need to play like a control deck, but you do have the option to, especially if you go first. Cards like Quench and Sabotage are fantastic. Plus, again, I wouldn't call this control deck or anything, but playing blue and not having access to a hard counter of some kind just feels blatantly wrong, so at least a few copies of Sabotage and the Quench right now, because again, Quench is just a ludicrous card. But moving on to fun stuff again, here's Muyan Ling. I'm going to play a couple of copies of this 
because I absolutely adore the Sky Dancer. I also absolutely adore Sky Dancers, the uh, 1980s toy line that was also a show for a while. Those were those are cool things, but I really much more than those even do I like Mu Yan Ling because Mu is Boo. This is decent quote unquote removal some of the time, but the ability to just make four fours, sometimes multiple four fours in a game, is actually really good. And this again is a card that will win us a fair amount of games. It's like everyone's talking about how broken three mana planeswalkers are, like all the time, because, oh, the Oko and, ooh, Teferi, they're so good, because three mana planeswalkers are inherently broken, right? But, like, nobody talks about Mu Yan Ling, and she's so good. I swear I'm trying to bring you as much tech as I can in this deck tech, but I'm just really excited about all these cards, and I think that's showing through in my voice work for this video. If only you could see my face this time around, but I will play this deck on camera very soon, I promise you. This feels like the old days where a deck tech is me just going, oh, this card is good and I like it. It's fun. Play it. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's what got me all the subs in the first place. <laughs> Enthusiasm is a good thing, and I really like this deck, so you're not going to stop me from smiling for this one. But anyway, let's move on to a copy of God Eternal Kefnet. Just the one. Again, I don't think we need to go crazy with this <laughs> in the deck. I've <laughs> got a lot of silver bullets in here, but again, I just really don't ever want to draw the second Kefnet, so one is usually enough, and we've got plenty of other win conditions, but you remember all those incense and sorceries and whatnot that I listed off earlier? Well, this is good with pretty much any of them, even if you're just casting an opt. That's very good. <laughs> you, you get a free opt. I mean, it's not free. You still have to pay the blue for it, but whatever. You get a, you get an opt. So it's pretty sweet. Plus, you get a 4-5 unkillable flyer, and that's, I hear tell, that's pretty good right now, too. And by the way, I hear you typing. Yes, I know, Kefnet might not be good with all of those instants and sorceries that we're playing, because, you know, we're playing counter spells and stuff. But opt, callous dismissal, chemister's insight, unsummon, all of those premium to cast off the top of your library with Kefnet. <laughs> Mostly I'm playing this as a flying beat stick that's hard to deal with that occasionally gets this ridiculous card advantage, so don't hit me too hard. But we're also playing two copies of Cavalier Gales to be kind of exactly those things too. <laughs> a flying, kind of difficult to deal with beat stick that draws us cards. That is a very good card, and I keep saying that cards will do this, but this is yet another thing that if your opponent doesn't have an immediate answer to, it's probably just going to fly over and smash their face in and end the game for you. But you know, we need a few more evasive creatures in this deck to really help finish games off when we need to, and for that matter, we even need some more spells in this deck to make sure that we can generate tempo on early turns and maybe take advantage of Gadwick in key situations, so this is all leading to four copies of Brazen Borrower. Let me just go ahead and rip that band-aid off. <laughs> you know, I know this is an expensive card, but the deck overall isn't too expensive at the end of the day, and half of that expense is this playset of Brace and Borrowers. I mean, if you don't already have your playset, you really ought to invest in these, because it's going to be a playable standard card the entire time. It's available to play in standard. <laughs> the card is just ridiculous. It, again, generates proper tempo, is really good with Gadwick, especially during an opponent's combat step, and even all by itself it can wreck an opponent's combat step. I hate that you can only pop your opponent's stuff back to their hand, but the ability to take out not only creatures, but again, non-creature permanent stuff like, you know, planeswalkers and enchantments is really important in this format right now, and it all comes stapled to a 3-1 flyer that will, again, occasionally just fly over and do the last six or nine points of damage you need to finish the game. But to finish the main here, I've just got one copy of Midnight Clock. You don't have to play this card. I'm just going <laughs> to throw that out here right now. In the dozen or so games that I've played with this deck so far, I have yet to see Midnight Clock actually strike 12. It just hasn't happened. That said, that's probably because I'm only playing the one copy of it, but <laughs> this has mostly been like a glorified mana rock, you know, but I just, I don't want to give up on it. The card is super fun, and if it ever does actually Time Twister, it'll be like one of the best moments of standard for me <laughs> in, the, in the last like three months or so. So again, I'm not going to give up on Midnight Clock, but feel free to uh, not play this card <laughs> if you don't want to. But again, I set out specifically to play fun cards that I'm excited to play, and Midnight Clock fits the bill. Now, we're playing 26 lands in this thing because, you know, we've got a lot of really expensive cards. And, like, Mass Manipulation and Gadwick are cards that really never top out 
<laughs> you know, so more lands is kind of always a good thing, and we're never sad to draw a land. Even turns where we're not trying to make the biggest Gadwick or mass manipulation possible, we are usually trying to play multiple spells, especially if we've already landed a Gadwick that drew us three or four cards, or we've hit a Cavalier of Gales, or we've got a Magic Mirror out. We want to play, like, four cards a turn. It requires all the mana, so let's play all the mana. Now, when we get to the sideboard, you see that we just have, like, some of the best options in all of Standard. I mean, we've got staples like Negate, that you kind of have to play, but we've also got Mystical Dispute, which is really good against all the Oko decks right now and pretty much anything playing blue, but can even be brought in if you just want more counter spells. That's also a thing that can happen, but Sorcery Spyglass, really good against Okos and pretty much any Planeswalker right now. I see a lot of people trying to make like Grixis Fires of Invention work with Nicole Bolas and Chandra. Just yeah, bring it in, bring it in. It's, it's good against Planeswalkers, do it. But there's also Disdainful Stroke against Fires of Invention. Again, that deck, Planeswalkers, Doom Foretold, and a bunch of other things that play things that cost four and more, which turns out it's a bunch of decks. <laughs> right now and disdainful stroke could actually maybe go in the main for that matter but aside from that we've got a narset partner of part i always want to say partner <laughs> narset party reveals because um i just couldn't not play this card somewhere in the 75 of a deck that's looking to play good blue cards it should probably be in here somewhere right now here are your power rankings don't get too excited because your final score here is 61 which isn't super good if you if you follow the channel that's not incredible but the price tag isn't so bad either you know it's only about a hundred dollars a little bit north of that but not as much as like a hundred and twenty dollars uh, to play this deck right now and again it sets out to have fun which is what magic and and yay games in general are supposed to be about in the first place and pretty much every card in this deck is just really fun to cast and that ladies and gentlemen is what it should be all about now, just like the last couple of videos, I want to take you through at least two quick games with this deck to really illustrate what we're trying to do here. And both of these games are really demonstrative of this deck's ability to generate tempo in the early game and then bridge the gap to something game-ending in the later turns. In this first game, we're up against a red-black sacrifice deck, a deck that is rising up the ranks pretty quickly, although this version does play Grim Initiate and you don't really see that every day. Maybe they just want to play more one-drops. I'm not too sure, but we do take a little bit of damage here, but that's okay. We can Callous Dismissal the Grim Initiate on the next turn, get it off the battlefield, then start countering spells, at which point we're actually able to get to a fifth turn Magic Mirror, start drawing cards, hold off the opponent's board position for a couple of more turns, and then end the game effectively with a Mass Manipulation. At the end of things here, our opponent is actually going to scoop to the card advantage that we get from Magic Mirror and just wait to you see how many cards we actually draw with the mirror this game. Now this turn, our opponent landed a Priest of Forgotten Gods, which would usually make me very nervous when they have a Mayhem Devil on the battlefield, but we have yet another Callous Dismissal in our hand to take care of that Priest of Forgotten Gods for a turn. We can soak up four damage next turn, it's not really that big of a deal. We just don't necessarily want our opponent to start activating Priest and getting real value and triggers off of Mayhem Devil. And again, we're able to stay alive long enough to keep that from happening and draw a ton of cards with this mirror no matter how dire things might look right this moment. Now you might say that I should have opted a little bit earlier in the turn, but either way we waited till the combat step and got a brazen borrower for our troubles, which allows us to again set them back from activating this Priest of the Forgotten Gods and now getting double Mayhem Devil triggers when they do so. Now we have a Sinister Sabotage in our hand, cocked and loaded for when they try to play Priest once more. We get Cavalier of Gales on top here. If we didn't already have a bunch of powerful cards in our hand, th that really seals the deal right there. Our opponent does get another Priest of the Forgotten Gods. We give him a nice, but we're able to Brazen Borrower or Mayhem double back to their hand and draw four cards this turn, courtesy of the Magic Mirror, at which point we can just Mass Manipulation because we now have eight mana and get a Priest and a Mayhem Devil. But the opponent is Valiant and doesn't quite scoop yet. 
In fact, they will scoop when they see exactly how many cards we actually get to rip off the top of our library with a magic mirror next turn. Now the second game is another one that really showcases our tempo. We're able to get Quench on the Paradise Druid on turn two. Turn three, we drop the island, say go, and we'll be saying go for a few turns in this game. Our opponent on Glow Spore Shaman, so some sort of crazy green-black deck. I, for one, love to see Glow Spore Shaman, but again, we can let our opponent have this, even soak up some damage for a turn or two, so long as we end up getting some tempo, clearing the board, and making way to casting our important cards. Now you may be wondering why I haven't quite cast this opt yet. That's because what I originally wanted to do, and yes, the opponent attacked with Gilded Goose on accident there, what I wanted to do was get the Gadwick down and save the opt for after the Gadwick was on the battlefield, but you'll see I really want to draw a land, so I end up casting the opt on the opponent's turn here. We also get to take advantage of what tempo we did make by quenching the other Paradise Druid our opponent had in their hand. Now we have five mana and we can start going off. We Gadwick for two cards here and even though this Gadwick is going to get removed, it draws us into Counterspell. And that counterspell proves to be very handy against Sir Conrad the Grim, and we get to see the upcoming Cavalier of Gales, which is going to help out a lot in this game. We'll get yet another Callous Dismissal, put it on top, and then cast Cavalier of Gales to make sure that we draw it. Now we have all of the tempo in the world, and we also get a Brazen Borrower off of that play, meaning that we'll be able to pop stuff back to our opponent's hand for the rest of the game. And as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that's what they end up scooping to here is the frustration of having everything they attempt to play bounced back to their hand. They do get a great hinge here, and when we go to Braze and Borrow it, that's when they get a little frustrated, and they just can't take it anymore. But that's it for this one. I hope that you had as much fun hearing about this deck and visualizing this deck as I had playing it and explaining it to you, because like when I set out to build this, all I wanted to do was have fun, and we did win a bunch of games, but again, that's not really what was important to me. When I built this thing, I just wanted to kick back you know, take my shoes off and <laughs> have a little bit of fun. That's exactly what the deck is good for. But again, winning is fun, and the deck can do that too. And if you were interested in doing that, then check out the first link in the description as always, and go over to TCOG Player to check out their wares. You can check out this deck list through that link, pick up any pieces that you might need, play the deck of your next FNM, and just, again, just have some fun playing Magic again. Remember, remember when we did that? <laughs> we can do it once more, I promise you. You can go home again, but anyway, that's it for this one. Make sure you like the video on your way out. It really helps me. Also, sub, I am really, y'all, I am trying to get there to 120,000, but we're like 4,000 subs away, so if you're watching this and you're not subbed, do it. You, I mean, you watch all my content, right? So you might as well go ahead and sub if you haven't done it yet. I would really appreciate it. It kind of helps me more than just about anything you can do. Aside from checking out the Patreon, if you really want to support content like this, just go over there, pledge a dollar, link in the description, it really helps me out. And you get incentives for that. Read about it on the Patreon page, folks. Anyway, aside from that, I'm pretty sure I'm done. Just let me know how you felt about this one down there in the comments section and stuff you would have played if you were trying to build the most fun mono blue deck you could think of. But I'm pretty sure I'm done for this one. So let's, let's catch you cats later, everybody. I'm tough from the place, as usual. And you will see my face next time, I promise you. I will catch you cats later. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind. But here we are at the, at the Patreon shout-out portion of the video where I'm not... 
I'm not using my like announcer voice quite as much. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to sound like I'm on the radio or anything. I'm just kind of talking to you. I'm not, I'm just Devin <laughs> right now. But anyway, I need to do the Patreon shout out to, to a person that I have been waiting. You can hear me rubbing my hands together. <laughs> so I actually am excited. A person I've been waiting to give a Patreon shout out to for a really long time. Sir, Mr. Dom Guido, old Dominic Guidi Pants. I just, this guy's been a Patreon for like ever, like since I started a Patreon. <laughs> this guy's been a Patreon. And like, I have fun playing around with his name, sending sending sign cards to Dominaria Guido and all that. So, I just, you're a good, you're a good dude, Dom, and I want you to know that. And uh, yeah, I, I, like, I like me some Dom Guido and I always have solid dude right there. He's a patron. You should be too. But anyway, I think I'm I think I'm done. I'll catch you. I'll catch you later, Dom. I'm uh, I'll I will. <laughs> I don't know how to end this one. <laughs> I guess I guess I'm Audi 5000. Is that a thing? People don't say that. People haven't said that since like 2007. <laughs>